after uh, tumbling class, the formal portion of the tumbling class, he would bring out a mini tramp okay, and let kids freestyle. Okay, and didn't, there were no spotters. Uh, there was really no instruction. He just gave them, hey, you know, go for it. And a kid went up and tried to do a somersault in the air and landed on his head and is now a quadriplegic. Okay? Now, the court, in its analysis, as it came up on the pleadings, decided that, you know, there might be, the, the, or that the plaintiff's complaint alleged enough facts to justify taking this thing to trial because they said a jury could reasonably find that that action, just turning kids loose on a mini tramp without any spotters, without any instruction, could be, you know, acting in a conscious disregard for the safety of others. Other typical examples would be if uh, you turn kids loose in a vocational shop, okay, with the uh, saws or equipment, or in a chemistry lab, not requiring kids to wear goggles, all right, when you're dealing with uh, situations, or leaving a BD classroom unattended. Okay? Another recent example was where they had a, a BD bus that was carrying a, a known sexual predator to school. The aide that was supposed to be on the bus every morning to watch that kid didn't show up. They decided, well, we'll go ahead and run the bus route anyway. And the kid ended up hurting another kid. Okay? Well, they knew of a danger. They were aware that this was a dangerous situation, but chose to ignore it. That's how you get yourself sued in Illinois. Follow me? Okay. Yes? I was always told uh, if I had an incident happen, whether it was on playground duty or whether I was on a field trip and an incident <coughs> happened, that my act of, like, if I didn't perform the CPR correctly, but I was trying to do the right thing, that I would be okay. It's that I needed to do something to assist an aide, whether that's send a runner to the office or I needed to do something. But if I didn't respond in any way, then that was Absolutely. where I got in trouble. Absolutely. We stand in loco parentis, don't we? In the place of parents. Okay? We have a duty to take care of our kids. So to do nothing under those circumstances I think would certainly meet this standard and you could be found personally liable. And that means, when I say that you're found liable, that means they come for your bank account, your car, your house, etc. Okay? Good point. Okay? All right. Next. Um, yeah, this top one, which doesn't come out too well. This is about, do you, I said, I think I made that one true false. You've got to report it to the building principal. Why, why would I put true or did I put an asterisk? Why would that not just be clearly true? Yes? Because you also have to uh, report it to um, the state. I can't think what their name is right now. DCFS. Yeah, very good. Right. The statute says, the statute says you are responsible for contacting the state agency. So this is a little bit of a trick question. Certainly you would never report anything of this nature without talking to your principal first. Okay? I'd want to let the principal know, look, this is what's going on. Um, and, and oftentimes the way it works, the principal then will make the phone call because you probably got to get back to class and do your thing. But just know this in the back of your mind that if the principal would, were to say to himself, well, you know, I know that family and I'm, there's probably nothing going on and didn't make that report, you could be uh, criminally liable. Okay? It's a Class A misdemeanor in Illinois not to report uh, uh, abuse. So the, the responsibility is yours is the point that I want to make. Reporting to the principal or to the guidance counselor or somebody alone is not enough. Okay? All right. Um, what do I mean in 22? What, yeah, I think we would all agree that that's, why would there be an asterisk on that? Isn't that pretty clear cut? It is. However, the facts may be very um, subtle. There have been cases where 
the notice to the teacher have been very uh, innocuous. A teacher gets a paper in English class or reads in a journal that a kid, you know, eh, I just don't feel like living anymore, even more subtle than that. The teacher talks to the kid, say, hey, wait a minute, you know, what's, what's going on here? I have this information. The kid says, oh, I was just, uh, I was just writing some stuff down. I really don't mean it. I'm not going to hurt myself. There have been cases then where that has transpired or where guidance counselors have talked to kids and they've convinced the guidance counselor, hey, there's, there's no problem here. And the kid goes home and does what? Kills themselves. Guess who's going to be liable in that situation? And also have to carry that burden with you the rest of your life. What the courts have said is that it doesn't take much for you just to pick up the phone and call somebody. If you get a paper with that kind of message in it, what you need to do is report it to the guidance counselor, to your principal, okay? and they should, and if they don't, you should, call the parent okay? and let the parent know. I just want you to know this is what transpired. Uh, if you, you know, I don't believe there's any validity here, but uh, I'm obligated to let you know. Okay? Yes? I had a situation once where a young man, actually a student came to me, I was a counselor, and said this child or this boy is self-mutilating himself. This was a young man that wore shorts. He had scars all over his legs, all over his arms. Now why didn't other teachers see this or observe it? A student came to me. I called the hotline. He was in the hospital that evening. That's an excellent example. When in doubt, you go ahead and you make the call and, you know, for no other reason than to make sure that you're covered. But uh, the more important reason is uh, the call is going to take you two minutes and you just don't know what else is going on in that kid's life. Yes, in the back. The call to the parent, is that as far as you're required to go or is there further steps? It would depend on your investigation, okay? I suppose if the kid had just written something in the journal, it just might be a phone call home. I would talk to the counselor first and get the advice on how this should be handled. Maybe they may be dealing with this kid already, so they may take it from there. But uh, yeah, if you learn that uh, the reason for the suicide has to do with other issues, then you may want to expand uh, your response. I think I would also write in a journal somewhere what I've done. You know, if you take a child and you tell the principal this child I'm just concerned about that. I'd write that down. You, know, you had documentation that you actually shared that with something, in case something would happen. That's the voice of experience talking. Thank you. <laughs> the documentation is, is important. That's exactly right, Les. Thank you. Somebody else have a question? Um, who's to, if you call the parents, um, who's to say that where's the proof that you did call if like, the parents say, you know, or not, if there, something happened? Uh -huh. Well, I think the documentation is important. I suppose if it if uh, push came to shove, I'd subpoena the uh, phone, phone logs. Say, look, there was a phone call made from this place to that place at this particular time. Also report to the principal that you made the call. Yes, that's right. Okay, all right. Next one. Okay, next. A, okay, what's that? Yeah, a student may be searched by school personnel without a warrant if there's reasonable suspicion to believe the student has in his or her possession some item which would constitute violation of school rules or the law. Okay. My advice to you is that you do not conduct searches as a teacher. That, those should only be conducted by school administrators. All you would do is go down and report, you know, hey, uh, 25 bucks got stolen out of the boys' locker room and then turn it over to the administration. Under no circumstances should you ever be a part or agree to be a part of any kind of a strip search. 